Power Boat Television, North America's premier boating show. Here's this week's My Boat feature. Modern marine engines are extremely high tech, so many boat owners shy away from doing some routine maintenance projects that they really can do. This week on My Boat, we're going to show you how to do a basic tune-up on a 350 mag fuel-injected Mercruiser under the watchful eyes of the experts at the Mercury Marine Training Center. Well, where we're going to start here is with the spark plugs, and here's a quick tip when you're changing spark plugs, especially if it hasn't been done for a while is grab the boot and give it a twist to free the boot on the wire and then pull to remove it cleanly from the spark plug. With all of the plugs removed on the port side, upon inspection it will be evident to you that they need changing. Now modern marine engines use iridium spark plugs, so when you're handling these things, one of the things you have to do is be very careful that the tips are quite fragile on the uh, spark plugs. Regardless, a lot of people just take them out of the box and throw them in, but you really have to check and make sure the gap is correct. And in this case, it calls for 0 0.060, and with our gauge, that's exactly what this one is, so we can start putting the plugs in. When installing the plugs, start them by hand to ensure that they are not cross-threaded and tighten the plugs lightly. When all of the plugs are in, use a torque wrench to tighten them to 11 foot-pounds. With that complete, you can tackle the other bank of spark plugs. Well, eight new plugs in the engine. Next up is to change the wires, the rotor cap, and the rotor. And to do that, we're going to have to take a few things off the engine. With the cover off, the mounting plate for the wiring harness has to be unbolted to access the distributor. Well, we've opened up the area so we can get to the distributor cap and start working on the ignition wires next. Now here's a really important tip. Do it one wire at a time so you keep the firing order working properly. To start, remove the two clips holding the wires, then the first ignition wire. Select the matching length wire from the set and plug it into the distributor and connect it to the correct spark plug. When all of the wires have been replaced, reinstall the clips. With both banks of wires replaced, next remove the screw securing the distributor cap with a Torx screwdriver. We've got the distributor cap just about ready to come off, but here's a quick tip so you don't mess up the order of your ignition wires going back on and change the firing order of the engine. Take some masking tape and wrap it around each one of the wires and mark them one, two, three, four on each side of the distributor. And you do have to wrap them around the wires because they are silicone and they won't stick. After unplugging the wires, you can remove the cap, then remove the rotor by undoing the two torque screws. Now it's time to install the new rotor, but here's a couple of quick tips. First of all, the kit comes with new screws with Loctite already applied to the threads, so make sure you use those so they don't come loose. And secondly, quite easy to install because of the pin, it only installs one way, so you'll always get it right. After securing the rotor, set the cap back in place and tighten its two screws securely. And thanks to the labels, you won't have any problems reconnecting the wires. Well, we've got all the ignition wires and the coil and everything back in place. Now the last thing we're going to do is put on the coil wire. And here's something that Mercury does recommend before you put the coil wire back on. Let's get some dielectric compound, put some on the contacts before you put this high voltage line in place. Now, if most of your experience has been with a carbureted engine over the years on your boat, this is something you're not gonna be familiar with potentially, and that's changing the filter for the idle valve for the fuel injection system. This allows the air to come through here at idle and not open the throttle plate and if you do have a dirty filter in here, it's going to really make for bad idle and load on the engine. Well, that's it. After you've done your tune-up and the other service things, is to run the engine and make sure everything's running the way it should. 
But the only way to really tell is to visit your dealer, let them plug in their diagnostic equipment and run the engine for you to make sure everything from timing to all of the other parameters with the engine are running fine and there's no faults. So that's it. It's easy to do a tune-up. Give it a try.